Let's get into the let's get into the word today, Amen. Father in heaven, greatest God Almighty, I just thank you, Lord, for all that you're doing in our midst. We pray, Father, that your Holy Spirit is uh, heavy uh, amongst your people here today. Father God, um, certainly as a born again, baptized believer, we have much to rejoice in. May we also include heaven today in the rejoicing. That by the end of this message, one or two people might come forward and give their life to the one who gave his for them. Father God, we pray that you will continue to, to, you will continue to add to your kingdom as we seek your righteousness and your kingdom here from the pulpit in our classrooms and in our daily walk. Uh, may the lost be saved, Father God. May they come forward and say so. Uh, may the saved be baptized, Father God. Come forward and make a time to be immersed in showing the picture of the death, burial, and resurrection of your only begotten Son, Jesus, the Messiah. And Father God, I just pray that you continue to build Desert Hills as you would have her. Little as much when God is in it. That's what the song says. Certainly we have been little and we have been a lot. But as long as you are in it, Lord, that's all that really matters. We love you, Father. We thank you for this time. I pray that you help me to preach your word, unadulterated and edifying to your saints and a blessing to you. In Jesus' precious name, all of God's people said amen, amen. and amen. Um, I, I, as you know, I, I, I do the Instagram for the church. Not something I love doing. However, I have uh, grown to enjoy writing the daily devotional. It's interesting how I would have daily devotionals, but I would never write them down. But I've been going through different books, and I'll be finishing up Second Peter soon. Um, but as such, there's been a few who have uh, taken the Instagram as an opportunity to reach out to me on several topics. Uh, I'm not going to lie. I'm, I'm terrified of the social media. Uh, very few people have my phone number. And uh, that's going to become fewer and fewer still as the ministry continues to grow. I'll share with you what I shared Wednesday night. Uh, we had 31 ministers, or 29 out of 31 ministers, represented at our cabinet meeting the other day. 
And I feel as though that uh, uh, each one of those ministers, they have my phone number. If there's an issue, you should call your minister. And if there's something that uh, I need to be made aware of, you can rest assured it will happen. But that being said, um, uh, it's a little scary for me with the social media. Even one of the uh, the high and mighty um, uh, skinny jean preachers, pastors, in, in the Southern Baptist Convention fell prey to, um, well, coarse, coarse jesting is about all I can say because I didn't read the text. But uh, pr- thank God that those who reach out to me on Instagram always do so with godly questions, godly inquiries, or godly interests. Uh, and yesterday was no different. You are more than likely aware of the earthquake in Turkey here recently. I want to tell you, I, I try desperately not to preach the headlines. Uh, I, I have been criticized in the past, and I, I, it is valid only in this sense, that I don't come in and every time they put the, the flag at half-mast, see, when I was growing up, Joanne, you put the flag of the United States at half-mast, it was for something that was nationally impactful. You know, the space shuttle blew up. We all watched it. You know, that flag went, now if somebody stubs their toe, better put the flag at half-mast type deal. No, I don't come in and preach the headlines because if it bleeds, it leads in, in the media. So I could come in every week and pray for something terrible that's happening in the world. That being said, I want to say this. I don't want to minimize what has happened in Turkey. I, I don't want to minimize what's happened in Turkey, but... We must keep these things in in perspective. And we must not only keep these things in perspective, but we must look at what goes on in our world with a biblical perspective. I don't like this term world view because it's a sociological term. And uh, uh, sociology and psychology are both soft sciences. Each one has its points, I imagine, and, and each one does have its profoundness. However, I don't like uh, referring to them much because I feel as though there is only one worldview, and that is through the eyes of Jesus Christ. Amen. And then everybody else has, has their own view. Right. And we're all trying, as Christians, trying to see the world through Jesus' eyes, loving the unlovable, calling the lost to repentance, receiving those who have repented, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and in doing so, teaching them all that Jesus Christ commanded us. This is the only worldview that matters. As we look today, first, before we go back to Second Thessalonians, as we look today uh, at what is going on in the world, let us turn to the book of Luke. Let us turn to the book of Luke. In chapter 21, Luke is one of the three, what are called synoptic gospels. Luke uh, chapter 21 uh, can overlay over Matthew chapter 24. Each has its distinctions and its intricacies. Matthew, Matthew chapter 24 probably being the more famous of the two synoptic tellings of Christ's mentioning of end times. But I had Judy print up some articles uh, off the interwebs so that we could look at things possibly in context and then juxtapose them with historical and biblical accounts. Luke chapter 21, starting in verse 8, Jesus is speaking, and Jesus says, Take heed that you be not deceived. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and the time draweth near, and the time draweth near. Go ye therefore unto, go ye not therefore unto them. But when ye shall hear of wars and commotions, be not afraid, for these things must come to pass, but the end is not by and by, or the end is not near. Then Jesus said unto them, Nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and great earthquakes shall be in diverse places, and famines, and pestilence, and fearful sights, and great signs shall there be from heaven. But before all these things, 
They shall lay their hands on you and persecute you and deliver you up to the synagogues and into the prisons, being brought before kings and rulers for my name's sake. Now, I've heard these verses since I was a little boy. And when I was a little boy, we had the threat of nuclear war every week. Every week we heard how Russia could just wipe us out all in a day. And uh, we had protests at the White House and, and in Washington, D.C. against nu the nuclear arms proliferation. Well, things have changed a bit. However, we still live in a world that doesn't really give us much of any good news. Uh, something for free I will give you today. When the world starts declaring peace, peace, peace for all, peace forever, that's when the end is near. But until then, we're going to have these things, and they're likened unto birth pangs. Let's go back through them real quick, and I've got these articles that I think could coincide with them. Uh, let's look here. It says, um, but when you hear of uh, wars and commotions, be not terrified. Don't be afraid when you hear wars against wars, uh, uh, country rising against country, nation against na nation, kingdom against kingdom. Why? Well, because it's always been. Here we have Russia and the Ukraine war. Russia and Ukraine. And, and there are people that are rattling the sabers that think that, you know, we're going to get drawn into this and this might be World War III. Well, I don't know. And no one knows because no one can see the future. However, there is going to be a battle at the end, and guess who the overwhelming victor will be? Jesus Christ and his people. Amen. So this is not something we should be terrified of, even as Jesus says, be not terrified. That doesn't mean don't be concerned. I'm going to have a 12-year-old grandson March 1st. He will be of age within six years to be drafted. Yeah, I'm concerned about wars and rumors of wars, but I will tell you this, I'm not afraid. My grandson is saved. See? Uh, almost everybody in my whole family is saved. So I'm not afraid and I'm not terrified, but I am concerned. I think it's responsible to be concerned, but I am not terrified. For these things must come to pass, but the end is not by and by. Then Jesus said, nation shall rise against nation, kingdom of against kingdom. Again, referring even to uh, Ukraine and possibly soon China and Taiwan. We don't know. We don't know, but maybe. And great earthquakes shall be in diverse places. That's the, uh, the, uh, the emphasis today. This great earthquakes in diverse places. And, and here, here we have uh, uh, in Turkey that it killed 3,700 people just right off the bat. And now as the time goes, less and less people are being found alive earthquakes in diverse places you know no one said much when the tsunami hit japan i said hey that looks like divine judgment to me no one said much when there was great earthquakes in india and the tsunami hit india it looked like divine judgment to me i don't know but so these things have to happen and they are happening and as we get closer and closer to the end, they will happen quicker and quicker. And this is good news for the child of God. Can I get an amen on that? Amen. Oh, man, thank you. Because the poor kids upstairs are going, oh, I haven't even kissed a girl yet. You know, I haven't even kissed. I haven't even had my first date yet. And you know how I know that, Joanne? Because I said the same thing. Like, man, I heard they're coming out with sequels to Star Wars, and it's already the end of the world. For the Christian, this is a good thing. Better is one day in his house than a thousand elsewhere. Well, let's keep looking here. It says, uh, kingdom, king, uh, great earthquakes in diverse places, famines and pestilence. Pestilence? <laughs> what do you think COVID was? So pestilence. Uh, we all have our own opinions on it. And I'm not going to get into opinions, but I will tell you this. Most of the measures that were taken, just a dry run to what the Antichrist is going to do. You think about what they did to put those poor Australians. Their leader, she just stepped down because she was just a pawn. But as a pawn of the evil one, oh my gosh, it was, a, it, it was a, a police state over there. 
Sad, sad. And it could be coming to America soon. Unless, you know, God's people stand up and say, hey, God's really in control, not the viro vir virologists. Amen. So we look here and it says, yeah, these diverse places, famines and pestilence and fearful sights and great signs sh shall there be from heaven. Uh, I call, uh, texted a friend of mine this morning. I wanted to use his uh, job description um, because he's one of these, uh, well, he's one of these spooky dudes. You know, they've... <laughs> They work in the black world. I have other friends and those at the church. And um, he, he was, at least at one time, someone in the no, capital N-O-W. And uh, I, I asked him uh, here recently, I said, hey, what's going on? What do you think about this balloon? Now, the balloon is not a sign, nor is it a wonder. The fact of the matter is everybody I know likes balloons, except for the one China floated over the United States. That's... I said, what do you think about these mysterious green lights over Hawaii? What do you think about UFOs in the news? I know, I know what I think. I think it's Fugazi. I think it's probably military equipment. But it's funny how these things always seem to come up when you know, the president's speech doesn't go quite as we, well as we thought it would. And suddenly we've got green lights in the skies over Hawaii. Listen, there's going to be greater signs and wonders in the skies than a laser show over Hawaii. I'm leaving these here at the altar. You can pick them up as you leave if you want. Well, let's keep looking here. And, and let's let's face it. Let's talk about the one that really bothers us, and that's that's there's going to be fearful sights, great signs, verse eleven, and there, that shall, shall there be from heaven. But before all these things, they shall lay hands on you and persecute you, deliver you up to the synagogues and into the prisons, and brought before kings and rulers for my name's sake. That's the one that I think most Bible believers kind of go, hmm, man, I'm not looking forward to that. And yet we're here. We're here. We just don't think we're here because it hasn't been on our doorstep yet. Here I've got um, a couple articles. First article, pastor facing 10 years in prison for preaching uh, at a, a Canada trucker blockade, protesting the vaccine mandates. 10 years in prison for what? Preaching. You say, no, he was, he was, it was the mandates. Listen to me. You think they're going to come right out? And expose themselves as the antichrists they are? No. They're going to say it's for your good to stay home. It's for your good not to hear the gospel. Sit in your living room. Don't fellowship with other Christians. Ooh, it's for your good. FBI, oh, no, let's go here. Uh, persecution against Christians is on uh, the worldwide rise. That's... uh. This was printed uh, 2, 12, 23. This isn't, this isn't 20 years ago. This is two days ago. Ah, wife of jailed Canadian pastor speaks out. This isn't the country I grew up in. Gets put in prison. And here's my favorite one. This is my favorite one for the week. Uh, published 2, 12, of 2023, the FBI has found a gateway to declare Christians as criminals, says federal whistleblower. I want to be clear here. I'm not anti-government. I am pro-good government. I'm going to leave it here. You can look it up. It's on Fox News. Most of you watch that probably anyway. I'm not a Fox News rah-rah. But understand this, they, when I say they, I mean the spirit of the Antichrist that is already in the world is going to continue to try to usurp control over God's people because they probably don't even believe in a God. And if they do, they're probably going to do the wrong thing even in God's name. Revelation testifies of that. 
Can I read it again for you? The FBI has found a gateway to declare Christians as criminals. As it was in the first century, so it will be at the end times. You can mark it down. I don't, I don't put on a prophet's hat. I just read the papers and look at it through a biblical lens. I believe that the, this is describing more than likely the Great Tribulation. But we are already there. There has been a dry run for the Antichrist to come on the scene and do everything that the Bible describes him doing. How is it that we are to respond to this? I'm glad you asked, Cheryl or Sherry. Turn with me to John chapter 16. John chapter 16, before we get back to 2 Thessalonians. John chapter 16, starting in verse 27. John chapter 16, verse 27. Jesus says, For the Father himself loveth you. Who's Jesus speaking to? The world? No. Now we know God so loved the world that gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in him shall never perish but have eternal life. Amen. John 3 16. But not everybody in the world loves him. So he's talking to those who love God. You say, well, how do you know? Isn't that funny? Everybody wants to know how to interpret the Bible. I think if you just read it, it says what it means and means what it says. It says, For the Father himself loveth you, who? The disciples, Christians, because you have loved me. If you love not Jesus, you have not the Father. It's very clear in Scripture. You know, only people that want the wiggle room need interpretation. But it says, the Father loves those who love Jesus and have believed that I came from God. And I came from the fa forth from the Father and am come into the world again, into the world. Again, I leave the world and go to the Father. Jesus is giving a, uh, a foreshadow of his death, his burial, and his resurrection. Skip down with me to verse 31. And Jesus says to them, do ye now believe? I, I, like, what, I like what Jesus uh, says to Peter. Who do you say that I am? Do you now believe? Behold, the hour cometh, verse 32, yea, now he is, uh, and yea, is now, is now come, that ye shall be scattered, every man to his own, and shall leave me alone. And yet I am not alone, because the Father is with me. This is directly speaking about when they come and get him at the Garden of Gethsemane. Everyone scattered, but Jesus knows he's not alone. And Christian, you can thank God, neither are you. Jesus says, these things I have spoken unto you, that in me ye might have peace. Peace. In the world ye shall have what? Tribulation. Now, I don't believe we're going to be here for the great tribulation. But in the world, we're going to have trouble. You know why? They're going to hate us because they hated him. If we love Jesus Christ, we're going to be different than the world. You, you don't, try, don't try and get your unsaved friends saved by acting like them. There's no such thing as sheep in wolf's clothing. That's the devil's inversion of what Scripture says about him. He comes as a wolf in sheep's clothing. And what does he do? So, well, you could really reach the tattooed folks if you get more tattoos. Now, go, get, get, you know, you want to scribble on your body, go ahead. I could care less. But, but don't do it in, in pretense that you're trying to reach the lost. In that sense, there are no Christian tattoos. You say, well, you could probably reach more drunks if you went to the bar, had a drink or two yourself. I mean, you know, the Bible says all things in moderation. Chill with that. The Bible says that wine and strong drink is a mocker. Uh, well, not, not me. I can handle it. You don't know what you can handle and what you can't handle. You know what you could handle when you were 20. <laughs> now you're, you're, you're plowing down 40 like, you know, it, it's nobody's business. And you know what? Your body has changed. Trust me, it continues to do so. No, my friends, I, I want to tell you that it, it, Jesus Christ 
has said that he had trouble in the world, so will we. And he tells us to be of good cheer. So, oh man, you get bad news and you're supposed to be happy about it? Yeah, because if you're catching flack for being a Christian, <laughs> there's the evidence right there. That's a good thing. Consider it all joy. He says, in the world you will know tribulation, but be of good cheer, because why? I, Jesus, has overcome the world. Turn with me to 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. This Antichrist, given many names in Scripture, is, is someone who is opposed to all things anointed by God. Last week I, I gave the description of Yeshua HaMashiach, uh, Jesus Christos, coming from the Greek, and, and said that uh, Jesus means salvation, literally salvation now, if you call him Hosanna. Uh, but know this, Christ is not Jesus' last name, it, it is a designation. It means the anointed one. Now when you put these two words together, Jesus HaMashiach, Jesus the Christ, Jesus the anointed one, Jesus meaning salvation, what we are saying is He is the one and the only anointed salvation. There is no other way unto the Father except by Him. His name means salvation. There's no name in heaven or earth by which you can be saved other than the name of Jesus Christ. Amen or oh me. So you think all roads lead to Rome. They might lead to Rome, but they don't all lead to heaven. There's only one way, and that's through Him. But this one that comes on the scene, as we looked at last week in First and Second John, called the Antichrist, is he who is opposed to the anointed salvation. And, by extension, everything that is anointed of, a, of God. Christian, it was a slur in the first century. They were called Christians first at Antioch, the book of Acts says. A slur, it was a put down. It was a curse. But if we are called Christians, they were saying we were like little Christs. We are the little anointed. The anointing is not a thing. The anointing is not a, an experience. The anointing is a person. The anointing is the person of the Holy Ghost. The anointing comes upon the believer the moment, the moment a believer comes to save the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ and is converted. You are now anointed with the Spirit of God. All throughout the Old Testament, every time they anointed something with oil, it was a sign and a symbol of the all-encompassing anointing of the Holy Spirit. It was set aside and set apart for what reason? Holiness. Holiness. Holy unto God. And I say it often and we'll say it again, just in case there's a couple of uh, Pharisees in our crowd here today. Holy unto God, not holy, not holier than thou. I'm not holding my holiness up against anybody else's. There's one plumb line within our midst, and his name is Jesus Christ. Amen. Yes, this Antichrist, he comes on the scene, and when he comes on the scene, he is going to be anti-anything anointed of God. Let's read about him. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first, an apostasia. And that man of sin revealed... Sin be revealed, the son of perdition. He is called by many names. He is called man of sin, son of perdition, the self-exalted one who opposes all that is God, the lawless one, the rider of the white horse, Revelation chapter 6, verse 2, the beast, Revelation chapter 13, verse 2, the one who stands in the temple and makes abomination of desolation, Matthew chapter 24, verses 14 and 15, the little horn, Daniel chapter 7. We're going to try and get there today. But let's read a little bit more as it's described to us in our study that is still continuing in 2 Thessalonians. This is the one who opposes, verse 4, who opposes and exalted himself above all that is called God, or that is worship, so that he, as God, sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. You know, this has already happened once. 
If we look back, you don't have to turn your Bibles back, but back here in, in Luke chapter 21, one of the things I can tell you is this, is all of these things have already occurred. Some believe, they're called preterists and all millennials, some believe that all of these things have already occurred. And we're futurists. Uh, dispensationalists, I'm not a hyper-dispensationalist, but dispensationalists believe these are yet to occur in, in the most profound and intense sense. One thing I'll share with you is in 1908 and 1909, did you know five million people died of famine? Nobody knows that. Why? Well, it's on, well, it's on what do they call it, fish tape? Remember the fish tape? You have to go to the library. You didn't have the internet back in the day. You had to go and they had these things on so you go back, you study the newspapers. Worldwide, but, uh, between 5 and 6 million people died of famine back then. So all of these things have occurred and been occurring, except in the end, it's going to be more and more intense. Meanwhile, this one who will set himself up in the temple of God, it has already occurred in, in a type as well. Antiochus, or Antiochus Epiphanes, did this. He was a Greek king. And he came in and, and he conquered Jerusalem, uh, ransacked the temple, and he, he, he um, killed a pig on the altar, not only defiling the temple, but then he dedicated it to Zeus. This has already occurred once, but it is a type and a foreshadow of what is coming. And what is coming is much, much worse than what has happened. And again, to go back to the cyclical nature of the world, I'll just quote the Bible. Nothing is new under the sun. What has happened will happen again. There might be a little different fashion, a little bit of different take on it, but what has happened will happen again. Yes, uh, this was already uh, done once by uh, Antichus Epiphanes, and, and it, again it will happen with the Antichrist, this Man of, or son of perdition, this man of sin, this lawless one. And it goes on to say, remember you not when I was with you, I told you these things. This is not a teaching that was pulled out of a hat. It's a teaching that was lost and obscured by the traditions of men. Preachers, I know you're here this morning. Listen to me. If you cannot confirm a doctrine that you hold firm with, with two or more verses in the Bible, you need to not teach that doctrine. If there's a doctrine that someone is trying to teach you that you cannot technically see anywhere or even grasp the concept in, within Scripture, hold off on that Scripture and wait. Either wait until you become more... Mature in the word or until it is proven false. Amen? That was for free. But Paul had already told the Thessalonians of all of these things. So this is just kind of like he's kind of boning up on the bullet points, if you will. And now you know, verse 6, and now you know what withholdeth that might be revealed in his time. We're going to go over this next week, but we're going to keep moving on. For the mystery of iniquity does already work. And he, now, he who now letteth will let, and he taken out of the way. Then shall the wicked one be revealed from the Lord, uh, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth, and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan, with all power, power, and signs, and lying wonders." You know one of the reasons why I would have put my faith in um, signs and wonders? They can all be faked. Quick anecdotal story, then we'll move on. I had a friend, I guess, he's preaching down in uh, South America. He said that uh, Holy Spirit was filling these people's cavities with gold fillings. He said he was preaching at a... He says, you know why I believe it? I go, I have no idea. I have no idea why you would believe that God, if he was going to help somebody with the cavity, wouldn't just give them a brand new teeth after giving Malchus, the servant who Peter cut the ear off of, a brand new ear. You would think if an ear is no problem for God, why not a new tooth? But you're going to give him gold. Okay, fine, whatever. He says, I'll tell you why. I'll tell you why it, uh, I believe it. He goes, I got back to my bungalow apartment wherever we were staying that night, and guess what? 
I said, do tell. He says, I pulled off my pants and went to get in the shower and there was gold flakes in my underwear. <laughs> and I said, you're laughing because that is ridiculous. Not only is it ridiculous, it is totally unbiblical. God doesn't do things that He has not already set a precedence for. Nowhere in the Bible do you see any gold panties. <laughs> and nowhere in the Bible do you see God, God restoring something with something that is inferior. As precious as the metal of gold is on the planet, it is inferior to the bone that your tooth is made out of. Trust me, I know. I lost a filling here not too long ago. Signs and wonders can be faked. Doctrines can be misplaced. Even falsified and forgotten. And this doctrine of the Antichrist, though the last 200 years has been preached, it has been forgotten in the majority of mainstream Christianity, at least in the Western Hemisphere. But Desert Hills, I want you to be forewarned. Young people upstairs, hey, I'm not going to tell you what to think. I just want to tell you, you know, use your brain. And I will tell you this. This is what I believe. And it was given to me when I was about your age, and I've been carrying it with me this whole time. And do you know something else? It has become more and more true. Every year I see biblical prophecy eking towards the end. Let's move on. And then shall that wicked one be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth, and shall, de and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming, even him whose coming is after the working of Satan, and the p all power and signs and lying wonders, and with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish, because they receive not the love of the truth. The people that perish eternally, it is because they will not receive the love of the truth. Do you love the truth today? I am a truth lover. And for this cause, God shall send them strong delusion, and they should believe a lie. <clears throat> Let's talk about the strong delusion, then we'll go to Daniel 7. Strong delusion? Amen. Amen. Almost everything you read on the internet now is a delusion. Uh, artificial intelligence now is now having conversation with itself. It doesn't recognize another artificial intelligence. So you have bots on the internet that are chattering back and forth, answering each other over things that are totally and utterly meaningless. You say, oh man, you're just a paranoid. Hey, that's fine. That's absolutely fine. Uh, I have been right before and not spiked the ball, and, and I think I'm right on this. You keep downloading everything. You keep looking at your phone while I'm preaching. You keep applying your own earthly and carnal knowledge to your life, and we'll see what the Lord does. We will see, and that's okay with me. That's okay. But know this, when I stand before my Maker, I'm going to be able to say, Father, I preached to Him everything I knew how. And I tried to forewarn them about the trinkets and the distractions that the world bring. But, let's face it, Lord, they didn't have patience for the truth. Turn with me to Daniel chapter 7. Daniel, speaking uh, or writing between the 6th and 7th century B.C., is the only prophet that Jesus Christ quotes concerning the end times. That's profound. Because he's not the only prophet that speaks of the end times. But he's the only prophet that Jesus Christ quotes concerning the end times. And I personally believe because Jesus wanted us to go back. He wanted us 2,000 years later to, to know and understand that there was something about the prophecies of Daniel that would be very specific towards the end times and could not be looked at in general. Like, well, 5 million people died in 1908 and 1909 of famine. Ah, uh, famines have always been happening. Ah, uh, you know, Ant Antichus Epiphanes, he already did that. That's probably who the writer was thinking of. No. Jesus speaks of Daniel because he's talking about a very specific person at a time yet to come. Daniel chapter 7, 
Verse 7, Daniel writes, After this I saw in the night visions, and behold, a fourth beast, dreadful and terrible and strong exceedingly. And it had a great and it had great iron teeth. It devoured and broke in pieces, and stampeded the residue with the feet of it. And it was diverse from all the beasts that were before it, and it had ten horns. I considered the horns. And behold, there came up among them another little horn. This is the Antichrist. Horns in the Old Testament represented power, earthly power, backed by spiritual dominions. And it says that this little horn, before whom there were three of the first horns plucked up by the roots, and behold, in this horn were eyes like the eyes of a man, and a mouth speaking great things. Eyes of a man. This is speaking of an individual. This little horn. Now, verses 7 and 8 are describing the Antichrist. Here in 9 and 10, we're going to be talking about Jesus. And he says, I beheld till till the three thrones were cast down, and the Ancient of Days did sit, whose garment was white as snow and hair. And, and, and the hair of his head like pure wool. This throne was like a fiery flame, and his wheels as burning fire. A fiery stream issued and came forth from before him. Thousands and thousands ministered unto him. Ten thousand times ten thousand stood before him. The judgment was set, and the books were opened. This is speaking about the Lamb slain before the foundations of the world who will judge the world in its final judgment. This Antichrist, he will look powerful even as a ram's horn. But it's just a little horn in comparison to the might of our Lamb, the Lion of Judah, Jesus Christ. Verse 11 goes on to say, I beheld then because of the voice of the great words which the horn spake, I beheld even... Till the beast was slain. He's a defeated foe, folks. God has foretold it. God has written it down. He is a loser. I beheld even till the beast was slain and his body destroyed and given to the burning flame. As concerning the rest of the beast, they had their dominion taken away. Yet their lives were prolonged for a season and a time. I saw in the night visions, and behold, one like the Son of Man came with the clouds of heaven and came to the Ancient of Days, and they brought him near before him. Jesus Christ said that while he was being interrogated by the high priest. He said, there's coming a day you will see me coming in the clouds. Even as he ascended from the Mount of Olives, and the angels asked the disciples as they were staring up, they said, uh, Men, what is it that thou look at? What is it that thou art seeking? Even as he went, in like manner he shall return. Even so, Lord, come quickly. And there was given him dominion and glory and a kingdom that, shall, that all people, nations and languages should serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion which shall not pass away and his kingdom that shall not be destroyed. I believe that's describing the millennial kingdom. Again, the preterist who believes everything that's already happened, I don't, we know that his kingdom is within the midst of his people. Why? Because he said the kingdom of God is within you. For two or more gathered, there I am within the midst. Words of Christ. You can interpret them how you want. I think they mean what they say. Ah, but he also said to Pilate, my kingdom is not of this world. If it were of this world, my disciples would rise up and fight. In fact, if his kingdom were of this world, Jesus Christ had the power to come to call down a legion of angels and wipe everybody off the planet. But he didn't. And do you know why he didn't? Because he loves you. Because he so loved the world. That he sacrificed himself. God became man and took responsibility for his creation's sin. 
He didn't have to do that. None of us need be here today. And yet by His grace, His tender mercies, and His love, we are. Do we not owe Him everything? He said, well, everything but that. Well, what is it that's coming between you and Jesus? Well, me and the big guy upstairs. Let me tell you something. Don't talk to me about the big guy upstairs. That's blasphemy. He's not a big guy upstairs. He's God Almighty. Well, me and the man. He's not ma a man. He's the man God, Jesus Christ. And you're going to stand before him one day. Best to start learning a little reverence for him now. Because if you are saved, you're going to stand for an eternity worshiping him. Look at it like dress rehearsal down here. You know, if you can learn to praise him, to worship him, and to consider it all joy, even as they lay hands on you, imprison you, and take you before the magistrates and kings for his name's sake, how much more as you stand before the risen Christ, who alone bears the marks of the crucifixion on your behalf, will you sing with joy uncomparable. Eye has not seen, ear hath not heard, nor has it entered into the mind of mankind of the riches and glory in Jesus Christ that he has stored up for us. No, my friends, let me tell you something. The riches and glory in comparison to the short time we spend here on this planet it far surpasses it. If you're here today and you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, hey, can I ask you something? Radio, internet, YouTube. Isn't it weird? The world is like weird right now. The young ones, they don't understand it. They're growing up. They're going to be the ones that grow up thinking that this is standard operating procedure. But we know... We know that there's something different going on right now. And if we do not recognize it, and we are not seeking the Lord, can I tell you something? You're going to be easily fooled. I've been called paranoid. I've been called uh, alarmist. I've been called a lot worse, too. But you know what? I know what the Word says. And the Word says there's coming the day it's going to hit the fan. Best to be ready. i tell you about, I brought up my friend who's in the know of things in the dark world. I said, brother, I said, uh, what do you make of this balloon and these lights? He says, you know what, Scott? He says, Everybody's all on edge. They should have been on edge 10 years ago. When it hits the fan, you're going to be saying, well, some people are going to be going, man, I, you know, I thought, that, I thought that preacher was just, I thought he was just paranoid. You know, I, I thought, you know, I thought that was just his interpretation. Yeah. Let the word speak. Let the word be clear. And let us not think ourselves above persecution. Look at the articles on the steps. Your own government is gaming it. Will you be here when it does go south? Or will you be with the saints as we are called up? To be with him in the sky, as the scripture says, forever. If you say, well, I, yes, I, I do love him, even as you read a moment ago. I love him, I'm in him, and he is in the Father, and we are one in Christ. Amen. So tell me about your baptism. I don't know about that baptism thing. You know, people are so funny, man. They equivocate on the dumbest stuff. It's real simple. If you're born again you're commanded to be baptized. And if you're baptized as a baby, it doesn't count. Because you had never made a choice for Christ. And I'll put this out there, if you listen and say amen. amen. 
If you were baptized in an alien church, one that is not a New Testament church, you say, I don't know what that is. I got good news. They can go online, check it out. I've been preaching through the 11 tenets of a New Testament church on YouTube. You must be rebaptized to fulfill Scripture. And I'll put it out there. Let me, let me just put it out for everybody here. You must be rebaptized to be a member of Desert Hills Baptist Church. Doesn't mean you can't attend. Doesn't mean we don't love you. Doesn't mean we don't think you love Jesus. What it means is, is every person that is a member of Desert Hills Baptist Church has gone through those waters or a like doctrine church. Usually another Baptist church. But let's face it, there's some people that don't call themselves Baptists, yet they still hold to the same tenets that we do. And if you're here today and you don't have a church home to call your own and you're a born-again, baptized believer, there's no lone sheep, only lone wolves. Sheep gather to a flock, and they follow their shepherd. We'd like to welcome you here if you think God wants you in our fold.